Hi again, this is Andy, KE4GKP, and welcome back to the Hand Whisperer and Lesson 32 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam course. In this lesson, we go over the T9B questions from the question pool, which go over feed lines. The T9B section of questions deal with types of feed lines, losses versus frequency, SWR concepts, matching, weather protection, and connectors. And feed lines is kind of an obscure subject, but uh, I try to give you the stuff you need to know, and hopefully this will get you through the one question on the exam that will be from this section. So with that, let's get going. Why is it important to have a low SWR in an antenna system that uses coaxial cable feed line? Well, for this question, you can just think of SWR in general. The answer you're looking for is to allow the efficient transfer of power and reduce losses. So if you have a high SWR, a lot of your signal is getting reflected back, therefore it is not efficient and it has a high rate of loss. Now, if you have a low SWR, that's what allows the efficient transfer of power and, reduce, and reduces loss. And this makes sense. What is the impedance of the most commonly used coaxial cable in typical amateur radio installations? Well, the answer is 50 ohms. And you should probably just memorize this one. There's a bunch of reasons why this is 50 ohms, one of the biggest of which is they just chose it to be 50 ohms. Um, so 50 ohms is the impedance of the most commonly used coaxial cable in typical amateur radio installations. Why is coaxial cable used more often than any other feed line for amateur radio antenna systems? Well, this is an easy question because the answer is it's easy. Um, it, the answer on the exam is it is easy to use and requires few special installation considerations. And for the most part, coaxial cable is just a plug and play type of feed line. You don't have to worry about too much and it's fairly low maintenance. So coaxial cable is used most often because it's easy to use and requires few special installation considerations. What does an antenna tuner do? Well an antenna tuner matches the antenna system impedance to the transceiver's output impedance. And essentially it, it tunes the antenna. And based on what frequency you're using and what your antenna is tuned to, it can yeah, an antenna tuner can sort of electronically lengthen or shorten your antenna so that its impedance matches the signal you're sending out your transmitter. So within reason, an antenna tuner can allow you to tune an antenna made for one band and use it on another band. So they're a handy piece of gear to have, but an antenna tuner will match your antenna's impedance to your transmitter's output impedance. What generally happens as the frequency of a signal passing through coaxial cable is increased? Well, th what happens when the, the signal frequency increases is the loss in the coax increases. And the reason for this is this combination of skin effect, resistance, dielectric losses, Ohm's law, and P is equal to IE, and you mix those all together, and that's why. But um, just know that there's loss in all coax, and you need to make the association that if you increase your frequency, you increase your loss. And so the loss increases as the frequency of the signal passing through the coax increases. Which of the following connectors is most suitable for frequencies above 400 megahertz? The answer you're looking for is a type N connector. So what you need to get out of this question is that different connectors have different properties, impedances, and fit to different types of feed lines. So for a high power UHF communications, an N type connector is the best. So an N type connector is bet most suitable for frequencies above 400 megahertz. Which of the following is true of PL259 type coax connectors? All right, this is the HF version of the previous question. The answer you're looking for is they are commonly used at HF frequencies. And for the same reasons N-type connectors are good for UHF, PL259s are good for HF. So for the exam, you need to know that N-type connectors are good for UHF frequencies. PL259 type coax connectors are good for HF frequencies. Why should coax connectors exposed to the weather be sealed against water intrusion? The answer is to prevent an increase in feed line loss. And if you remember back a few lessons, moisture and coax are bad. They do not mix. And if the conductors or the interior of the coax get wet, it's going to start corroding those conductors in there and you're going to drastically increase the loss of your signal. So remember, if you're exposing coax to the weather and you have a connector exposed to, that could potentially be exposed to rain or moisture, waterproof it. What might cause erratic changes in SWR readings? Well, if your SWR is jumping all over the place, and you, you, but the answer is you probably have a loose connection. So a loose connection in an antenna or a feed line will cause erratic changes in SWR readings most often. 
However, there could be some other stuff, but the first thing I would always check is a loose connection in an antenna or a feed line. What electrical difference exists between the smaller RG58 and larger RG8 coaxial cables? The answer you're looking for is RG8 cable has less loss at a given frequency, and the question kind of gives a hint of that. All right, it's dealing with smaller RG58 and larger RG8 coaxial cables. So if you remember that RG8 has a wider diameter or a larger diameter than RG58, it will generally have less loss than um, the RG58, which has a smaller diameter. So if you can make that association, you'll get this question right. There are other reasons why, but the larger and smaller uh, diameters make sense and will help you answer this question on the exam. Which of the following types of feed line has lowest loss at VHF and UHF? All right, the answer is air insulated hard line. Something you got to memorize, air insulated hard line has lowest loss at VHF and UHF. And that's it for the T9B review, and now it's time for the quiz. So take out your pencil and paper, number 1 through 11, and when you're done with the quiz, be sure to stop by hamwhisperer.com to check your answers. As always, I'll go through the questions rather quick. If you need more time, just pause the video. And now let's start the quiz. Question one. Why is it important to have a low SWR in an antenna system that uses coaxial cable feed line? A, to reduce television interference. B, to allow the efficient transfer of power and reduce losses. C, to prolong antenna life. Or D, all of these choices are correct. Question two. What is the impedance of the most commonly used coaxial cable in typical amateur radio installations? A, 8 ohms, B, 50 ohms, C, 600 ohms, or D, 12 ohms. Question 3. Why is coaxial cable used more often than any other feed line for amateur radio antenna systems? A, it is easy to use and requires few special installation considerations. B, it has less loss than any other type of feed line. C, it can handle more power than any other type of feed line, or D, it is less expensive than any other type of feed line. Question four, what does an antenna tuner do? A, it matches the antenna system impedance to the transceiver's output impedance. B, it helps the receiver automatically tune in weak stations. C, it allows an antenna to be used on both transmit and receive, or D, it automatically selects the proper antenna for the frequency band being used. Question 5. What generally happens as the frequency of a signal passing through coaxial cable is increased? A. The apparent SWR increases. B. The reflected power increases. C. The characteristic impedance increases. Or D. The loss increases. Question 6. Which of the following connectors is most suitable for frequencies above 400 MHz? A. A UHF PL259 slash SO239 connector. B a type N connector, C, an RS-213 connector, or D, a DB-23 connector. Question 7. Which of the following is true of PL-259 type coax connectors? A, they are preferred for microwave operation. B, they are watertight. C, they are commonly used at HF frequencies. Or D, they are a bayonet type connector. Question 8. Why should coax connectors exposed to the weather be sealed against water intrusion? A. To prevent an increase in feed line loss. B. To prevent interference to telephones. C. To keep the jacket from becoming loose. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 9. What might cause erratic changes in SWR readings? A. The transmitter is being modulated. B. A loose connection in the antenna or a feed line. C. The transmitter is being overmodulated or D, interference from other stations is distorting your signal. Question 10. What electrical difference exists between the smaller RG58 and larger RG8 coaxial cables? A, there is no significant difference between the two types. B, RG58 cable has less loss at a given frequency. C, RG8 cable has less loss at a given frequency. Or D, RG58 cable can handle higher power levels. And question 11. Which of the following types of feed line has the lowest loss at VHF and UHF? A. 50 ohm flexible coax. B. Multi-conductor unbalanced cable. C. Air insulated hard line. Or D. 75 ohm flexible coax. 
And that completes Lesson 32 in the T9B section. Now that you're done with the quiz, just stop by hamwhisper.com to check your answers. You'll find them under the T9B link on the exam answers page. And until next time in Lesson 33, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.